Hey guys, welcome back to Heartway Farms. Today we're talking about how to start and care for your sourdough starter. All right, so we're gonna talk about all things sourdough today and getting started, and I am not gonna talk about it. I am here with Julian because she is the household Heartway Farms sourdough guru. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna talk about how to start your sourdough. Okay, so I've started a sourdough starter two times, and I've done it different both times. They're very similar, but, I, but I've done some little tweaks here and there to make it easier. Right. This is what I did last time to get this sourdough starter, and it's a very happy, healthy starter. It hasn't been fed, so it's not super active right now. Okay. But it is still a good starter and very good for making bread right now. I just made a beautiful loaf yesterday. Okay, so let's, let's start off by this here. If I'm looking at this and I walk into a kitchen, this kind of looks like a science experiment. It, it is a science experiment. Okay. Because it is a living, it is a living breathing thing. thing, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's got fl it's got fluid in it. It's got some bubbles in it. It's got that like effervescent nice smell yeah. to it, that tang to it. Mm -hmm. And the jar looks like it is a little bit kind of wonky here. What's going on with that? It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> it's alive. It's alive. Okay. My method for caring for and just my approach to sourdough in general is a little bit more unconventional. A lot of people keep it very by the book, very you must do this at this time with this exact measurement, with this exact weighted, weighted measurement. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. But for me, I don't do well under that kind of situation. Okay. So I've come up with, I call it like pioneer style. Okay. Very old fashioned, old world style sourdough okay. care and baking. And it's easy and if you have water, you have flour, you have a few other ingredients for flavoring, you can make sourdough bread okay. easily and efficiently. Okay. And without a lot of the typical hassle that comes with sourdough. Okay, so you're saying that you don't have to be super like afraid of or nervous or like make this more than it has to be like keep it simple yep. keep it simple stupid right yep so keep it simple keep it easy and keep it something that's just enjoyable that you get to use and that is it's functional around the house yes. okay very practical right. so let's go into if i don't have any of this stuff mm -hmm. how do i start my sourdough for the very first time how do i start my starter so the very first thing you'll need is a small glass or ceramic bowl i like the glass and then some flour. I have organic, uh, all-purpose white flour. Okay. You can do whole wheat as well, but white flour tends to, I've heard it works easier. I've never actually made a starter with whole wheat before. Okay. And then some filtered water. This is just filtered from our Berkey. You just wanna make sure it has no chlorine in it at all. If you don't live on a well or you don't have like a, a secure water source as far as not having extra stuff in it. So you're yes. on city water and you're concerned about having like fluoride and all the other stuff that comes with city water. Um, that would kill off normal bacteria and stuff yeah. like that. You want to have like more of like a distilled water yep. or a spring water. Yep, spring water is good. Okay. Mineral water. Okay. So water. something that maybe maybe someone who's on city water go ahead and buy something that's been reverse osmosis or a purified or spring water or distilled water. Of some yep. Sort. Or something that's like been run through like a Berkey or any other kind of like tabletop uh, water filter. filter. So really, all that I'm going to do to start is take a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and then put that into the bowl and then do a quarter cup of water. Okay, so once again, she didn't get super crazy about like tamping that no, and she just I scooped just it, it, threw it in there. Quick okay. shake. Right. And then I'm just going to mix this together. So equal parts flour and yep. water. Doesn't have to be completely smooth, just well combined. So the whole point of this is to make this something that everybody can do themselves. They don't have to be nervous about it or like super concerned about the process. It should be pretty straightforward and easy. Yes. Okay. And then it's combined like real, really quick, just throw it all together. And I'm gonna go put this on an open countertop or stove top or anywhere. And I would leave it there for 24 hours. Okay. And so then, you're gonna so. take the pancake batter that's completely bland. Yep. And throw it on the countertop and let it sit for 24 hours. Open, yep. Open. Open. Nothing, nothing on top of it. Why is it sitting open? You want the process of starting a sourdough is fermenting the um, flour that's in here. Okay. And that becomes food for the yeast that's in your environment. Everyone has yeast or and bacteria floating around the air. Okay. And what we're doing is trying to catch it. So we're catching and growing our own yeast. Is okay. What we're doing. All right. Instead of buying it in little packages from the store. Okay. So I'm gonna leave this on the countertop for 24 hours. And then I'll come back 24 hours later and add to it again 
a quarter cup of water, and a quarter cup of flour. And I'm just gonna mix it together. So we're adding more to it? Yep. Okay. And then I'm literally just gonna put it on the counter for another 24 hours. Okay, and how many 24 hour cycles are we doing this for? Anywhere from seven to 10 days. Okay, well, will it start to change at all or look it different? Will, yeah, a couple days into it, you'll start to notice it has a little bit of an off smell, almost like uh, Parmesan cheese, almost. Like not, this? Not, not quite oh, that okay. strong, okay. not okay. quite that strong. It'll be very, <laughs> very minimal. Okay. The texture will start to change, it'll start to get thicker. Okay. And then eventually you'll start to see little bubbles form on top of the surface of your starter. Okay, so gas bubbles are good. Yes, gas bubbles are good. All right. There's, there's stuff alive in there. You want it to be living. Okay, so seven to 10 days later, yeah. you're literally just adding to it. Are you ever taking away from it? Once, once this bowl, I don't know, this is probably like a quart and a half size bowl. Okay. Once this bowl reaches to about here, so like three quarters of the way full, I'm gonna go ahead and dump out half of it. And okay. I'm either gonna feed that to the chickens or put it in the garbage. Okay. And then you're gonna put this on the counter again, and then you're gonna continue adding the quarter cup of water and the quarter cup of flour. And then you're gonna continue doing that for a few more days. You wanna make sure it's really active, really alive, really bubbly. Okay. You won't see much rising because it is small. You, you, won't, see, you won't see it until it gets like an older mature starter. Okay. But you will see a lot of bubbles and you'll see it'll go through processes of being extra bubbly and extra like not bubbly. Like it'll go flat and bubbly sometimes. Okay. As it eats the flour that you put in there. Okay. So yeah, I've removed half of my starter and then I'm gonna continue feeding it the quarter cup of water and the quarter cup of flour. Okay. And I'm gonna let it do that for like maybe another four to five days depending. Okay. Once you get a really nice and bubbly starter, you're gonna go ahead and take your starter and then put it into either a mason jar like this and then this, it just has like, I just have a lid that I keep loosely on it so it can still breathe. So you don't wanna like- You don't wanna, it down, yeah, okay. you don't wanna suction it. And then this one, or then I also have like this little glass crock that I like, and this does not have a sealable lid, it just sits there. Okay. And then I'm gonna move it into one of those containers, and then I'm gonna stick it in my fridge. You're gonna refrigerate it? I'm gonna put it in the fridge. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm gonna keep it there until I want to use it. Okay. So when it comes time to use my starter, I'm going to pull out the cup of starter that I need for my recipe. Are you gonna mix it up first before you pull it out? Ah, uh, you can. I don't always. I usually just scoop it off. This, you see the liquid stuff on top? Okay. That's called a hooch. The hooch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's just, it just separates off a little bit, but this is like extra sour compared to this. Okay. So I actually like to keep this on because it gives the sourdough the nice depth of flavor of the sourness in the bread. So when you scoop it out, you're getting some of the hooch with yep. the, so like, the starter. If you, like usually I just, you can just like swirl it around if you want. You can just like lightly mix it. And then I would just pour it out and use it in my recipe. So it's not like you have to have like so much of the of the like the thicker content and the hooch. Yeah, you want to kind of a mix of both. You want a combination of okay. both. And okay. you can pour it off if you really don't want it to be that sour. I do both sometimes. It kind of depends on what I feel like that day. Okay. So then I have so I have transferred my starter into the jar. Mm -hmm. I'm pulling out a cup of it. I'm going to use. I'm going to go make my bread. Okay. What am I going to do with this? Uh, you just took something from it. I did. I just took something from it. Right. So what I'm going it's to do is... It's probably hungry. Yes, it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is replace what I have taken from it. So if I took a cup of sourdough starter out, I'm going to put in a cup of all-purpose flour and a cup of water, and I'm going to mix it up, put the lid back on it, and stick it back in the fridge until I want to use it again. Whether that's a week later, whether that's two weeks later, whether it's two days later, I am just gonna do that. I'm not gonna keep it on the counter. I'm not gonna make it rise and fall again. I'm just gonna put it back into the fridge fully fed and all the live active cultures will just continue to eat on it and eat off of all that good stuff I've put in there until I'm ready to use it again. Okay. So I don't have an actual feeding schedule for mine. I just, I probably use my starter once or twice a week. So I feed it once or twice a week, but I've also gone on vacations to where it's 10 days and I haven't touched it and it's totally fine to bake bread immediately as soon as I come home. Like out of the fridge, straight out of the fridge, doesn't have to come back to room temperature or anything. Okay. And it worked well. And it works well. Okay. So this is the way to start your own starter, mm -hmm. but you're also gonna offer for those who are afraid to start their own starter, you're gonna offer the ability for them to jump on heartwayfarms.com yes. and purchase a active starter as well. Mm -hmm. 
and then that can be shipped to you and then you can you would just jump into this feeding cycle then right yeah you take the you would mix together a cup of water and a cup of flour and then you'd throw in the whatever like the quarter cup half cup of starter that we would send okay and then by the next day you keep it on the counter just to make sure everything's alive okay and once everything's alive you you, you can make bread with it the next day or you can stick it in your fridge and wait to make bread with it whenever you whenever want to make you bread. Whenever you want to, okay. Yeah. So you would, instead of, you could skip that whole 10 to 14 day, yep. like getting your starter going yeah. from scratch, trying to find the old, the yeast in the air yep. and, and getting it to go into your, your yes. uh, starter, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. So then this, you're able to use this then for making breads You've made bagels. Mm -hmm. What else have you made with it? Uh, we've had pancakes, um, pancakes pretzels, uh, waffles. Waffles. Okay. Uh, anything that includes yeast or any leavening agents, like even banana breads. People have made banana breads with sourdough starters. Most baked goods you can make with sourdough. Uh, instead of instead of yeast. Instead of yeast, or along with yeast, or along with like baking powder and baking soda. Okay. There's no set rules. Something that came to mind too is like I I love having kind of tools in our toolbox for like what if we can't find yeast uh, a, yeah. a few years ago we went through the whole you know yeast shortage along with the other shortages that were out there and um, the people that were grabbing all the yeast um, and when you have the tools and you have the ideas in your head um, how to you know capture your own sourdough and have your own yeast that you can put in your products like just having the tools in your toolbox to to be continue making you know breads and all the things that mm -hmm. we like to eat and you know pair up with our foods um, the stockpile type of stuff. Um, this is a great technique. Just like I said, even if you don't want to start your own this go around and you want to order it from mm -hmm. uh, Julianne, you can do that. Um, but having the idea of how to do this and maybe even, you know, like you, you could order your stuff to start with Julianne so you can kind of get up and going and then you could just play and start with making your own mm -hmm. as well, like side by side. Yeah, I've made two I've made two starters from scratch, and right. both of them have been successful. But I've also bought a starter before, and that was also super convenient to have. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be yes. a lot easier just to have. You, yep, you can start like 24 hours later, okay. as opposed to two weeks. Is there anything else right now that you want to talk about? Because in the future, we're going to be doing quite a bit of stuff that you're going to be showing how to do all things sourdough. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go into some of the pros of like long ferment sourdough type of stuff and the uh, benefits of sourdough for your gut health and um, people who have sensitivities. So mm -hmm. we'll get into all that at a different time. Um, but is there anything else regarding the sourdough starter and care and use that we need to cover? Don't stress about it. Okay, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. <laughs> That's the best way to go, to go about most things, but especially with this. The simpler, the better. Okay. The more convenient for you. Do whatever is easiest for you to do. Okay. And make it make it fun, right? And make it fun. Okay. So awesome. If you have any other questions that you want to put in the comments below, if you've had any successes, some failures, some things that you've enjoyed about sourdough, throw those in the comments below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And like I said, you can check out uh, heartwayfarms.com and Julianne will have some sourdough starter available on there that she can ship directly to you. Thank you for joining us today. Like I said, check out heartwayfarms.com for all things sourdough and Heartway Farms related. And uh, thanks for joining us.